Even James Brown said that it's a man's world. But it wouldn't be nothing, nothing without a woman or a girl. It's dark as obsidian, and it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun, the salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could they be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The blood that doesn't need a blood. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to the wireless woman. I am your girl. Debbie and Nikki, and welcome to room 303. And since we're all new here, thank you for stopping by. Make sure you take time to like this video. Go ahead and drop a comment below and subscribe. And if you really feel in the content, go ahead and share it. So the mission of the wireless woman is teaching you how to get back to basics so you can live like a tribal girl in a virtual world. Now don't get it twisted. This channel is not just for the women and the ladies. The Wireless Way is a lifestyle that anyone can embrace, whether man, woman, or child. So stay tuned. Come check me out week after week. This channel is going to be like a gumbo. You'll be able to find something you like in it. So for those of you who know me well, class is now in session. So welcome again and again. I really appreciate you stopping by. The Wireless Woman is about living free, living on purpose, not for purpose, but on purpose, making your days intentional instead of accidental. And I believe that if we can all open ourselves up to that journey of self-discovery, what we find would be like gold for our people. So with that being said, today I'm going to introduce my topic, which if you can't tell by my face, I'm very excited about. So of course it's time to what? Call that role. So today I'm going to be issuing a challenge to all the black men, 35 and plus, particularly black men that don't have any children and have never been married. I need y'all to come on to the front of the class. We're about to read aloud. This challenge is called the BAM challenge. Not to be confused with the bad challenge, with the bad challenge, or with the BAM challenge. The BAM challenge, which stands for Be a Man, it's all about taking your place at the front of the Black community. And if you got a problem with that, if somehow that sets you off, then you can make that acronym mean whatever you want it to. It can be the Build a Ministry Challenge. It can be the Black African Mandingo Challenge. I don't really care. But today, we're going to do two things. Call out the bullshit and get into the deep shit. So I'm proposing the BAM Challenge, not as a solution to the problem, but as a place to start. I'm challenging 
black men, 35 and over, particularly those that are unmarried and don't have children, to stop in to the homes of single mothers, stop in to the homes of single black women who may not be mothers, and to actually check up on them, ask them if they need anything. Even if you're not that handy, be seen doing things around the house. Statistically speaking, households that have a man in them are less likely to be broken into, are less likely to be vandalized. You have to actually be present to see the problems, to know what they are, and to be in position to solve them. Even during the 1960s, the Black Panther Party enrollment was 60% women. Those images that we see of Black men in those Black berets with Black leather jackets were actually the minority in their own party. And you know why this happens? This doesn't happen because Black men don't show up, Black men are absent from there. It's because Black women outnumber Black men in every setting. The truth of the matter is the patriarchy hurts us all. Now, even though Black men are the global majority of men, in this country, we're a minority. And you got enemies on every side, whether you realize that or not. You honestly, in this climate, cannot afford to be an op to your own woman, to your own female counterpart. To look into the face of a woman that reflects your exact image and not see God says something about not the mirror, but the beholder. Yes, it's broken. And no, the answers are not easy. However, I do feel that there's work that can be done to at least pass a torch to the next generation that's still lit. I'm asking you to be responsible for several women in your community that need you because of the absence of other men like you. And I honestly want to see Black men return to their rightful place as king. However, you can't be a king without a kingdom. And you can't have a kingdom without dominion. And dominion comes as a result of responsibility. He blessed them and made them and gave them dominion. The dominion is in the them. I'm not asking you to save the whole black race. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm asking you to find people where you are. And I already know what I'm going to hear. Some people, it's black women that don't want you to. First of all, that's so feminine. I'm going to need men to stop with the bickering and complaining. Like, I already deal with that from black women. I don't, I like, oh, save me. Don't save her if she don't want to be saved, okay? Don't save her if she don't want to be saved. But if there are women around you in your community right where you are, I'm just asking you to reach out a hand of partnership and cooperation to see if you can both work together to do something that you couldn't do on your own. As I always say on this channel, I don't tell you what to do, I tell you what I do. And one of the things that really helped me and saved me during the time that I was developing as a wireless woman was several Black men that really came to my aid in that time. There's nothing that makes me feel safer as a woman. There's nothing that allows me to rest in my femininity like having men that I know that are nearby that can help, that come through, that check on me and my children. It makes me feel so much more confident and connected to my community when people know that there are men that are responsible for me. I'm not going to go into naming people on my channel, but I've had several Black men close to me and they know who they are who always check in, who always stop by if they're near in the neighborhood, who are in, who are intentional about showing up. And it has made a world of difference in me being able to cultivate my femininity. I believe in microcosm, macrocosm. And I know that if this has created a change in me as a Black woman, this can create a change in my community. This whole conversation of accountability versus responsibility seems to be the crux of the dichotomy between Black men and Black women. You cannot call a particular group of women into accountability if you are not personally responsible for that set of women. So on one hand, you're having the conversation that Black women need to be more accountable 
two black men, I'm assuming that that's where the accountability lies, that somehow black women have let black men down and therefore need to show some level of repentance for crimes against black men. I'm, I'm thinking that's what the issue is here. However, in order for there to be a recompense, there has to have been an infraction in the first place. So there's no way you can expect black women to be accountable to black men that are not also responsible for them. And unfortunately, I don't see these problems being attached to individual people. This seems to be a collective black woman against black man dynamic. I'm going to be honest. I think it's total bullshit that black men have turned their back on the same communities that birthed them. These are the same black hands that fed you, that nurtured you, protected you, and gave you life. What other race? What other group of people are charging their women with being accountable for the outcome of their community? Like, where do they do that at? Make it make sense. And as much as I know you think that women need to fall in line before you can lead them, that's just not how it works. If you want to lead, you lead. You go first. That's how it works. And what I'm saying isn't directed to all Black men because there are many, several thousands, millions in the community doing the work. What I'm saying is meant to address the Black men that are not in our community doing the work. And the truth of the matter is the men and the women that are doing the work, that are partnering with each other, that are cooperating to make sure that our communities are safe, that our children are educated and well-fed, are sick and tired and united against those outliers of us that are making us all look bad. Because whether you like it or not, you're not going to be separated from us. No amount of degrees, no amount of achievement, wealth, money on the part of one is going to speak for that one individual as long as your community is in shambles. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saddling the individual with the problems of the community. I'm charging the individual to make a difference in the community, not just with your individual achievement, which we applaud and appreciate, but with also understanding that you're not representative of the community. You're an exception to it. Like I'm meeting a lot of men lately that are throwing out, never married, no children, never married, no children. Like it's this badge of honor. And I'm not saying that it is or it's not. But what I am saying is, okay, what are you doing with that space and with that time? If you've been doing all the same things that all the other black men are doing and you don't have anything to show for it by way of a wife or children, then you should have something to show for it by way of some sort of achievement that leaves a legacy for your community. That's what children are. They're an inheritance. So what are you going to leave? What are you going to leave behind? Other than dust. Let's just be real. The truth of the matter is you're looking very birthday boy at the party and none of your friends are coming. I'm really looking at y'all the way Kevin Samuels looks at a single mom with two baby daddies who's 225 pounds. Like it's not giving what you think it's giving anymore. Especially when your community is on fire and the only thing that you have to put yourself forward as a viable mate is that you don't have any children and you've never been married. It's really wild how white supremacist patriarchy really got some black men thinking that y'all are bigger and better than the group. Like all this selfish gain, all this selfish ambition, where is it getting us as a people? We're taking on the capitalistic patriarchal views of our oppressor. And I'm going to tell you, baby, we're doing it like we do everything for the gods. I mean, we're doing it way better than they ever done it. They taking notes from us on how to oppress each other at this point. The attitude of some of these 35, 40, 45, and 49, I don't, I don't know why people don't think that's 50, but go ahead and set yourself off. For some reason, we've reduced Black men and Black women down to their relationship, marriage, desirability, which is weird because we live in a population where 60% of the Black women and 40% of the Black men will never marry. So I don't even really understand why we got so much emphasis on who we, who we want to date and who we don't want to date and how you look and how much money you make. And this shit's ridiculous. 
all this talk, all this talk makes no sense to me. I honestly believe that if black men and black women had something to do, if we were actually out building our community, we wouldn't have so much time to argue. Like, isn't there a game you need to watch or something like that? I find it very effeminate that some men are all on women's vlogs arguing with women about female issues, about the female perspective. You know what I think the problem really is? Right now in American society, the highest wage earners are white men and the most upwardly mobile financial class are black women. It seems like black men want to be white men and fall in line with that white supremacist patriarchy, or they want to be black women. And that's no shade to the trans community at all. I don't know why there are some of you that want to practice the same exact tactics that have caused you to be in the situation that you're in. I don't understand how you want to be the same men that subjugate and oppress you and oppress your community and oppress your people. We're not really out here looking for partners and looking for mates. We're looking for a reason to put each other down. We're looking for a reason to perpetuate white supremacy in our own community, to tear it apart, to watch it burn. And I don't understand our appetite for destruction. I got to be honest. I don't understand our attraction to dysfunction. I'm not trying to talk down on men that have never been married and don't have any children. What I'm saying is that just like single women, you can use your singlehood to actually build yourself into an asset for your community. The BAM challenge is about cultivating the skills, talents, and abilities that are needed to actually create meaningful and healthy partnerships and relationships. For the sake of community building, we can't even get to the point of nation building. Really talking about political parties and economics and all of these issues that are facing us collectively as Black people. All of the things that have us down in the same pot cooking together until we actually build a community. So I want you to find the women that are around you, that are near you, that if something was to happen to them in the middle of the night, could actually reach out to you and you're in close enough proximity to them to be available for them. It's about creating availability and vulnerability and intimacy, the things that people actually really want to have in their relationships when they're chasing when they're chasing money and body and all these different things. And the beauty of the situation is you get to practice on a family that's not even yours. You get to practice on a woman and some kids that you don't ultimately have to be responsible for. You get to take responsibility. You get to practice what responsibility looks like. A lot of y'all want women to come in and be accountable. No, we have to practice it there. And we have to practice accountability with men that are practicing learning how to provide and be responsible all these years post-slavery. And this is still what we're talking about. One of the things I learned during my divine feminine energy journey is that you cannot manifest things that you have not prepared yourself to receive. You just can't. You cannot cultivate. You cannot bring forth to fruition anything that you actually want or desire in your life if you have not prepared yourself to receive it. There's this beautiful thing that happens when a man is able to balance out his masculine and his feminine energy, when he's able to lead and cooperate, when he's able to protect and nurture, that's when you become a complete and a whole male. That's when you don't come to your community for what you can get. You come with something to offer. You come bringing and offering. You come with your hands full instead of your hands empty. That's when we can get rid of all the conversations about what do you bring to the table and what do you bring to the table. We don't even have a table. What is this a foosball table? Like, is this a ping pong table? What are we doing at the table? Like women are showing up at the table with with women are showing up to the table with arms full of groceries and food instead of a ping pong ball and a paddle. Like we didn't even know what kind of table it was. Are we here to cooperate or are we here to play games? And based on the current state of our community, I think we playing games.
I'm going to be honest with you. People are playing games with us because we're playing games with each other. This is a whole full squid game. That's what this is. You have to put in what you want to get out. And you have to put that in until you get that out. That's what the overflow is. As long as you're willing to give to those that are outside of the cup, it keeps making room in the cup. It keeps making room for you to develop your gift. And it's your gift that turns around and makes more room for you. The reason why we don't have space in these rooms that we want to go into is because we haven't created space. Men stand to learn a lot from women on what femininity is and why y'all need a measure of it also. It's the thing that causes us to be able to bring forth life. It's the thing that causes us to be able to rest. It's the thing that is the breeding ground for manifestation and for miracles. And if you're not going to have a woman in your life that you're connected to, you need to learn how to do that. Just like women have had to learn how to harness their masculine energy in order to compensate for an absence of men in their lives, men likewise have to develop feminine energy. They have to develop virtues like faith, patience, temperance, self-control. A lot of men learn these a lot of men learn these things from their wives in relationships. But if you don't even have any women around you, if you don't even have any children around you, how will you become comfortable and functional in a home with these very same aspects that you've turned your back on for the pursuit of happiness, for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? It does not exist outside of being able to serve your community. Until some black men realize this, you're just going to be a ball and chain around the feet of black progress. That's the real shit. That's the deep shit. We are that generation of people that knows that we need each other. Millennials and Gen Xers, we know we need each other. The wealth gap between blacks and whites has widened to 238% despite the fact that the black dollar has the most buying power in this country. Make that make sense. But many of the determining factors for wealth building are connected to marriage, are connected to partnerships within that community of people. That's why we're seeing Indians, Hispanics, Asians close the wealth gap on white people with less buying power than what black people have because we don't value marriage, family, raising our children. We don't value being a self-sufficient community. And that is coming from family values. That is coming from the values that we place on relationships, our inability to function as a community and as a nation. So like I said, I'm asking you to pick some women around you in close proximity to you and create a community. If I can get my king to begin to build communities where they are, then, then we can build a nation. Coming to an understanding of these things is what's going to save us from destruction. That's the challenge. Love a black woman. And that's what we need right now is you and I, T Y, love a black woman from infinity to infinity. But these are just my thoughts. But again, thank you for checking me out. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman. I'll see you next time.